Hey, in this video, I want to talk about Defender for Cloud and its capabilities. I want to go a little bit deeper into its portal and how can you make the most out of Defender plans that are part of the CNAP capabilities from the platform. It's a lot to take in and a lot to cover. So hopefully I'll go through some of it, not all of it because it's a lot, right? So for this video, I'll just cover the fundamentals of what you can expect in order to operate your cloud properly, utilizing uh, some of the best features of the CNAP capabilities of the platform. So let's get to it. Okay, so talking about email notifications and testing out uh, your operations with a workflow automation, the next step for you to, to deal with Defender for Cloud is of course looking at sample alerts. If you're just deploying it much like what I am doing right now on my lab environment, you probably don't have any alerts um, and that's fine because what the platform allows you to do is when you navigate to security alerts on the left hand side right here, uh, you just click on security alerts, you won't have anything but at the top corner here you can generate sample alerts. Uh, and of course these alerts they can range from different plans that you have available in your platform. If you're using all plans and you'd like to test out uh, potentially the investigation against alerts of all types, just enable all of them and create sample alerts. It'll take a few seconds and then you'll see a few alerts pop up in here. And what's really great about the sample alerts, as you're gonna see, is they are all tagged with a sample alert tag, which helps you clear them out later when you're done with that. There you go, it literally took less than a minute. Now they're all created. They all have the, set, the tag sample alert, as I mentioned, and the affected resource here's for very many different types of resources that can be protected by Defender for Cloud. Uh, and as you can see, the resource group here, they're all sample resource groups. Uh, we have subscription base, we have service base, we have also workload base kind of alerts. So this is great for you to have a grasp of how these alerts look like. Also, you can click on any of them and you can view their full details. You can take action on any of them. You can assign them to someone or you can set the state for each one of them. The exact experience you can expect to get when there's a real alert coming in here. For each alert, we're also aligning them to MITRE ATT&CK tactics, right? So for this particular uh, alert here of phishing content hosted somewhere in, in your web application, it seems to be related to MITRE ATT&CK tactics called collection. For example, if I click on view full details, I'm then gonna be taken to more details about that particular alert. I can see the Azure resource that is affected. This is a sample resource. I don't have this created in my environment. I have a sample URL right here. Everything created just when I clicked on that sample alert. Now we then take action. I can see uh, and experience what the recommendations would look like for an operator, a cloud operator to mitigate them or to fix this particular issue and threat in my environment. So the, the experience here for the analyst to leverage out of this is great. And you can also, of course, uh, leverage all of this to test out what you configured previously uh, in your platform in their settings. Now, the only thing these sample alerts won't let you do is experience attack path analysis. This is unfortunate because this is one of the main capabilities that are part of CNAP and are part of these advanced scenarios for uh, Defender CSPM plan, right? So attack path analysis being the ability to investigate what is the potential open attack path from an attacker. So from an open internet all the way down to a sensitive information type perhaps, which is a data aware capability that's part of Defender CSPM plan, but also to a particular storage account that you wouldn't want to be exposed, right? Or storage service that has perhaps whatever information from an application that is internal that shouldn't be exposed um, externally. So this here will lay it all down to you in a graphical, easy to use and easy to realize what the issue is with that con cloud configuration from a, per from a perspective. Now I'll try to create some alerts for future videos later on and that is on my to-do list. This here is extremely important for your, uh, of course, for your overall environment, particularly when we look at an application protection platform because if there is code that is also vulnerable and uh, accessible from outside, you would want to easily see them here and that's all the point, that's the entire point of CNAP, okay? 
At the same time, Cloud Security Explorer is another way to interact with your entire infrastructure being protected by Defender for Cloud. Now, Cloud Security Explorer is a, is a way to create queries with a GUI, with a graphical user interface, that is easy to select what kind of data you want to see in your query. Right? So think about uh, queries that are built with KQL that can be very well constructed by a um, expert at KQL or even with the help of uh, generative AI solutions such as uh, Copilot. But the point of security, Cloud Security um, Explorer right here is the ability to for, for anyone to create security queries using graphical use, user interfaces. Now, you can start your query and create your queries manually. Uh, like what I'm doing right here. So I can select a resource type. Uh, you can see the many resource types that are available right here. For example, I would choose virtual machines in my environment. Now, not only do I want to find virtual machine groups, which I just did right now. So I clicked on search and it found my virtual machines, not sample virtual machines from the alerts. Okay, so this is very, very good. So these are my actual virtual machines. Uh, but not only do I want to do that, I also want to create uh, an end type or a, a sub classification that will further drill down into uh, my own virtual machine. So I want to learn what virtual machines are exposed to the internet. Great, I don't have any hits. So they're all protected by just in time access in my case. Uh, if I would want to, to change that, I could change get traffics from network interfaces. Let's just do this and that's gonna spit back how many um, virtual machines are connected to network interfaces and in which these inch internet faces these are. So just a better way to navigate and learn from your infrastructure um, and find infrastructure in your environment. Now, naturally, this is just an example right here, but if I wanted to drill down to, to these virtual machines utilizing uh, sec security such as vulnerable, to remote code execution, for example, none of them will be, they're not hosting any application, but hey, if I had application servers or database servers that are vulnerable to code execution and the platform has identified that for me, boom, I'd get a hit right here. So just really helpful way to uh, scan, if I may use that term, but to find uh, your infrastructure in diff many different ways. So for example, if I wanna find user accounts, so let's check that out, user accounts that, um, can authenticate as uh, application identities. For example, let's see if I have user accounts authenticated as applications. Yep, there we go. I can't. I do have um, a user in this particular virtual machine um, that can authenticate as uh, yeah uh, an application identity. This can be concerning, right? So if this virtual machine is ever popped, the attacker will uh, will be able to uh, get access to application identities that this has access to, right? So this right here is a way to create action tasks for my team to action them. Now, if, if we think a little bit further and watch what kind of queries can be created for it, well, we can have a look at the templates. So let me clear my query right here. And right here at the bottom, I have a range of query templates. So for example, if I wanted to find internet exposed VMs with high severity vulnerabilities, I can just open the query. It's gonna pre-populate the fields there for me and I can search for it. Right, so this is just a way to find uh, queries that are relevant for my environment and I quickly build them right here. And for, of course, I can modify it from here. So if I wanted to add more fields, I could. If I wanted to drill it even further with, with vulnerabilities, I could and so on and so forth. Right, so that's just another way to build queries for your environment. And you, as you can see, we have a range of template queries in here as well, but you can also share query links. Right, so this is just another, yet another way to share query links to your env entire environment, for example. Now, lastly, what I wanna leave you with is workbooks. Workbooks are incredibly powerful and customizable ways to uh, view information in your environment. They can help you visualize things that are difficult to see just with the pre-made um, capabilities in here. So perhaps you would have to use code to find specific information but utilizing workbooks, you can create a graphical way to visualize that particular information for you. I know, for example, that uh, I have here a vulnerability assessment uh, workbook in my environment, and I can easily see if there are vulnerability assessment findings in my environment in this workbook. 
Um, gladly, I have none, which is a little odd. It's probably because I haven't used my uh, machines for a little while, right? Because every single one of my virtual machines will have vulnerability uh, assessment findings in them. But this particular workbook was created from. Uh, but this particular workbook was created from uh, the templates. Uh, I didn't create it myself. But I can just create uh, a workbook from scratch if I so want it. But why would I create something from scratch if I can just choose one of the templates, such as uh, compliance over time, for example. Not only can I, can I see that particular um, workbook, but I can also add it. And when I add it, I can, of course, add sections. I can add uh, more data into each one of those workbooks. And of course, I can save it for later use for my environment. Or if I want it, I can even share this particular template with my team. All right, so just another way to uh, explore the workbook capabilities. Particularly from a CNAP perspective, if I go to public templates, you can see here all the public templates that I can import into my environment. As you can see in the list here, we have uh, some very popular ones that I always see in my customers, such as cost estimation. Great if you have your, an environment that you want to ensure that you are not going over budget after you enabled a plan, right? So you, you can just estimate to understand how much enabling such a plan would cost in your environment given the number of resources that are currently connected to your environment. That's very important, right? But also you have the Dev DevOps security one, we have the API security one, and as new plans are enabled, new templates are created, such as Defender CSPM right here. When I click on it, I can see for this particular uh, workbook, I can see here the subscriptions that are covered by it, the secure score. I can also see the, the plans that are enabled for that particular uh, subscription. And I can see Defender CSPM insights as well. So container, container registry vulnerabilities that are found, agentless scanning for machines, um, sensitive data discovery, and so on and so forth. I can even see a drill down, an overview of the attack paths that were found in my environment. Right, so just an easier way to see all the Fender CSPM features from one dashboard. Of course, we can utilize attack path separately. We can utilize Cloud Security Explorer separately. We can utilize compliance uh, separately, but having it all under one workbook just helps you visualize the value that you're getting out of that particular investment. Okay, so hopefully you learned something from this video. Um, I'm still running a little bit of an issue in terms of resources that I have in my cloud. So my, my to-do list there is to just deploy more capabilities into my lab so that I can better utilize and demonstrate some of these capabilities. And I'll do that sometime. But for yourself, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments. Uh, if you have liked this few videos on Defender for Cloud that I've done, please like and subscribe because there'll be more coming up in the future. All right, see you next time.